हाय फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू दिस वीडियो ऑन अल्को लोकोमोटिव पावर पैक इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वेरियस कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ पावर पैक दिस इज अविनाश प्रकाश प्रोफेसर डीजल ट्रैक्शन इर्मी हियर द अल्को डीजल लोकोमोटिव इज पावर्ड विथ डी एल डब्ल्यू मेक टू फिफ्टी वन बी अपडेटेड सिक्सटीन सिलेंडर फ्यूल इफिशियंट इंजन विथ टर्बो सुपर चार्जर एंड लार्ज आफ्टर कूलर दीज आर मेजर कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ अल्को लोकोमोटिव पावर पैक फ्यू आर लिस्टेड हियर इंजन बेस इंजन ब्लॉक लाइनर पिस्टन एंड पिस्टन रिंग कनेक्टिंग रॉड सिलेंडर हेड एंड वाल्वस क्रैंक साफ्ट कैम साफ्ट टर्बो सुपर चार्जर आफ्टर कूलर दीज आर मेजर कंपोनेंट्स वी विल डिस्कस दीज कंपोनेंट्स इन डिटेल इन कमिंग स्लाइड्स सो नाउ विल डिस्कस इंजन बेस दिस इज द टिपिकल पावर पैक ऑफ अल्को लोकोमोटिव द इंजन बेस इज ए वेल्डेड स्टील स्ट्रक्चर दिस इज द बेस द इंजन बेस ऑफ अल्को लोकोमोटिव सपोर्ट्स द इंजन ब्लॉक दिस इज द इंजन ब्लॉक विच इज बींग सपोर्टेड बाई दिस बेस इट अलाउज ओपनिंग फॉर क्रैंक केस इंस्पेक्शन तो दीज आर ओपनिंग्स फॉर क्रैंक केस इन इंस्पेक्शन ओपनिंग ऑन इच साइड ऑफ दिस बेस गिव्स एक्सेस टू द कनेक्टिंग रॉड बियरिंग क्रैंक साफ्ट एंड मेन बियरिंग ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड्स मीन्स फॉर इंस्पेक्शन ऑफ ऑयल लाइन्स पिस्टन स्कर्ट एंड सिलेंडर लाइनर रिमूवेबल डोर्स इन क्लोज दिस ओपनिंग्स ऑल्सो एक्सप्लोजन डोर्स आर माउंटेड ऑन द राइट एंड लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ द बेस एट द पावर टेक ऑफ एंड दिस इज पावर टेक ऑफ एंड फाउंडेशन पैड्स आर प्रोवाइडेड फॉर ट्रांसमिटिंग लोड टू द चेसिस एंड ऑल्सो टू टेक लोअर ब्लॉड्स ऑफ द मेन जनरेटर मैग्नेट फ्रेम सो दिस इज द बेस इंजन ब्लॉक क्रैंक केस इंस्पेक्शन डोर फाउंडेशन पैड दिस इज अगेन द व्यू ऑफ इंजन बेस इट सर्व एज ए ऑयल सम्प बिलो दिस बेस वी हैव ए ऑयल सम्प एकोमोडेट लू ऑयल मेन हेडर there is a loop point main header in this base take loop oil pump and water pump at the front end there is the opening of water pump and loop oil pump this is on the front end lubricating oil is carried in the base below the base screen so we have a base screen here below which the loop oils are stored this is alternator end so basically engine base is made from weldable quality steel to a specification is2062 with 0.2% of carbon i have already discussed the engine base supports flowing structure block oil sump accommodate lube oil main header we have water pump and lube oil pump at the front allow opening for crankcase inspection take fitment of crankcase explosion door transmitting load to the chassis vacuum is maintained in the crankcase to avoid positive pressure in crankcase it's a lubricating oil drain plug bayonet gauge with high and low level marking are located also in the base now let's discuss engine block the engine block constructed from 
स्टील वेल मेल्ट हाउसेज द एंड सपोर्ट्स द मेजर कंपोनेंट ऑफ द इंजन लाइक क्रैंक साफ्ट एंड मेन बियरिंग कैम साफ्ट पुश रॉड्स लिफ्टर्स कनेक्टिंग रॉड्स एंड पिस्टन्स सिलेंडर लाइनर्स सिलेंडर हेड्स क्रैंकेस एग्जॉस्टर फ्यूल पम्प क्रॉस हेड्स एंड लीवर्स एंड गवर्नर इट ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड्स माउंटिंग सर्फेस फॉर द टर्बो सुपर चार्जर सपोर्ट एग्जॉस्ट मेनी फोल्ड एयर इंटक एल्बोज वाटर एल्बोज अल्टरनेटर दिस इज द ब्लॉक हेयर वी हैव द वी चैनल्स फॉर एयर हेयर इन वी कॉन्फिग्रेशन लाइनर्स आर अरेंज इन साइड द ब्लॉक दिस इज द कैम साफ्ट हाउसिंग कैम साफ्ट इज देयर दिस इज अ इंजन ब्लॉक लू वाइल मेन हेडर वाइब्रेशन डेम्पर हेयर वी हैव द क्रैंक साफ्ट दिस इज सिलेंडर हेड सो बेसिकली इट्स माउंट मेनी ऑफ द आइटम्स कंपोनेंट्स ऑन इट this is the typical engine block a replaceable liner sleeve is fitted into the lower liner board of the cylinder block here we can see the different liner locations so we have a top deck and bottom deck here so we use a replaceable liner sleeves it provides a wear surface for the lower feet of the liner the crank shaft main bearing saddles cam shaft bearing supports and the air intake manifolds are integral part of the block cooling water circulated by the water pump flows through the oil cooler into the passage in the cylinder block as we know we have the wet liners and liners are surrounded by the water there it circulates around the cylinder liners water from the block is conducted to the cylinder head by water jumper a crank shaft gear which drives the shaft and right cam shaft gear is applied to the power take off end of the shaft the free end of the shaft provides the drive for the engine's cooling water and lubricating oil pumps so it provides the drive gear drive for water pump and lube oil pump at the free end from the crank shaft main prime mover is crank shaft it also provides the uh, drive to camshaft gears so everything is mounted on the engine block so this is fabricated from low carbon steel to a specification is 2062 imported items fitted on the engine block as already told in crankshaft camshaft cylinder head liners piston connecting rod fuel injection pumps fuel pump cross head and support turbo support governors crankcase exhaust motors cylinder liner alco locomotives are fitted with wet liners which have slight interference fit on upper and lower deck this is the lower deck this is upper deck cylinder liners are made of high strength cross grain alloy cast iron heat treated to relieve stresses cylinder liners fit in the cylinder block with a metal to metal fit each liner has a collar on its upper end which sits in a counter board in the cylinder block one seal ring in the groove near the top and two rings two seal rings in grooves near the bottom of the liner seals the fit between the liner and the cylinder block in this two deck so we put liner sleeve here and insert we press the liners here we have two seals and one seals however we have one additional sealing ring at the 
uh, of with a square cross section has been provided for better sealing. The liner boards have chrome plated surface and is honeycombed by electrolyte process. So this is a typical liner, Valco locomotive, and this is around this liners we have water water jackets. Sealer liners with firing now, which has been introduced in alcohol locomotive, have many advantages. A firing prevents a hard oil carbon deposits from forming on the top land. A fire ring prevents a hard hard oil carbon deposit from forming on the top land of the piston. This is achieved by the a smaller inside diameter of the firing compared to the diameter of the cylinder board. As the piston passes through the top dead center, the firing scraps, this is the firing which scraps the unwanted oil carbon deposits of the piston and prevents deposit from forming on the top land and thus carbon polishing on liner surface can be avoided and as a result, Wear of the piston ring running surface is reduced, with, which helps to reduce low oil consumption, liner wear, and radial ring wear. So, this firing has been introduced, which has many advantages. It polishes the cylinder uh, piston top surface, which removes the hard oil carbon deposits. It is fitted after fitment of the piston, which is a lip fit. So this is the liner. This is here we can see the top space for firing and additional rings have been provided for better sealing at the bottom where we have liner sleeves. So liner sleeves, liner where wet liners are fitted with slight interference fit on upper and lower deck, one seal ring in the groove near the top of the liner and two seals ring in the grooves near the bottom of the liner seals the fits between the liner and the cylinder block and additional sealing rings with a square cross section has been provided for better sealings. The liner boards have chrome plated surface and is honeycombed by electrolytic process. Cylinder liners are made of high strength cross grained alloy cast iron heat treated to relieve stresses. This is the how, this is the sleeve which is being pressed in the block and this is the liners which are being pressed after the fitment of a liner sleeve. There is a interference fit. This is the firing. So, piston. The piston is the most important component in the diesel engine as it forms a part of the combustion chamber and also takes direct part in transmission of power. 18% of Heat developed in cylinder is absorbed by the piston only. Pistons are oil cooled, made of aluminum body and steel crown. Lubricating oil is delivered to the piston cooling groups from the crankshaft by means of a hole through the connecting rod and the piston pin. Here is the location of piston pin. Original Alco engines had aluminum disc top piston but use of high efficiency turbochargers and higher capacity fuel injection pumps led to higher peak firing pressures. As aluminum pistons cannot withstand these higher firing pressures, steel cap pistons were developed. These steel cap pistons were provided with a special crown profile for better combustion. This is the steel cap. 
also the shape of piston on the top surface was modified so steel cap piston are now used whereas earlier it was aluminium piston a steel cap piston can withstand higher compressive and thermal loading due to better cooling piston life in also increased due to less corrosion and lesser wear of ring groups modified steel cap piston with single bolt design was adopted with benefits like cases of looseness of stretch bolt eliminated and leak past gases through the bolt holes eliminated we had four bolt design and single bolt design so single bolt design was adopted which has more advantages pistonry the main function of piston rings are sealing of combustion chamber and thus prevents blow by of air and high temperature combustion gases from getting access to crank shaft crank case sorry in crank case it can cause positive pressure which is very dangerous to the engine it also scraps down excess loose oil from walls of the cylinder liner and thus prevents reaching loose oil into combustion chamber piston rings are made of malleable gray cast iron with open graphite structure and a hard polarlytic matrix the piston rings operates during a part of its life under condition of marginal lubrication and hence material composition has important role in this regard the piston ring is very important components of power pack it has very much important role in reducing the lube oil consumption by preventing the excess lube oil coming to the combustion chamber from the crank case there has been many developments in piston rings also over the period of time we are now busy using 3 rb piston rings the 3 rb piston rings are used for improved piston ring life less wear and less low while consumption it consists of two compression ring a square and taper and one oil scraper ring so this is a square and taper this is third oil scraper ring top ring is a square type design with side face chrome ceramic to reduce axial wear second is tapered face with chrome plated third is oil scraper rings with chrome plated the top most rear ring bears the maximum brunt of the high pressure hot gases because it is directly on the top and it faces the combustion gases which are at very high temperature this results in heavy wears in the upper ring groups in piston in order to overcome this problem nickel resist rings insert is fitted in the uppermost ring groups of the piston so this is the latest three ring version piston rings which are now being fitted in all alco locomotives connecting rod is a member connecting piston and crank shaft and is a medium for converting the reciprocating motion to the rotary motion so here we have a piston ring and this side it is connected on the crank pin and it transmits the reciprocating motion of the piston into rotary motion of the crank shaft the connecting rod is high strength alloy steel forging with the conventional rod cap joining both ends of the rod the drilled or passage for pressurized lubrication it is drilled inside for lubrication of the piston rings piston and here from the crank pin through this connecting rod it goes to the piston ring piston pin from there to the piston connecting rod is usually about four to times 
four to five times the of the crank radius. Cylinder head is secured to the cylinder block by seven studs. It is subjected to high shock stress and combustion temperature at the lower phase, which forms a part of combustion chamber. It is a complicated casting where cooling passes are coded for holding water for cooling the cylinder head. Individual water jumpers from the cylinder block to each cylinder head conduct water from the cylinder block to water cooling passage in the cylinder heads. The cooling water discharge from each head is carried to the water outlet header by individual elbow connections. Code passage permit the admission of scavenging air and the expulsion of exhaust gases. Metal to metal joints of the flap lap type form the gas seal between the cylinder heads and the cylinder liner and prevents the escape of gases from the cylinder. No gasket is required between cylinder head and liner. Each head has suitable chambers for two air inlet valves, two exhaust valves and a fuel injection nozzle. To take care of increased heat load plus cylinder heads have been developed having air intake valve angle of 30 degree instead of 40 degree in the conventional cylinder head. The intake and exhaust ports have been streamlined for improved air flow, minimized flow resistance and improved breathing of cylinder head. So Alco 251 plus cylinder heads are the latest generation cylinder heads used in operated engines with the following features. Fire deck thickness reduced for better heat transmission, middle deck modified by increasing number of ribs supports to increase its mechanical strength. The location of cooling passage has also been changed to give better heat transfer. The valve seat inserts has been press fitted without snap ring resulting in larger contact area and thus better heat transfer. This is the typical 251 plus cylinder head now mostly used. We will discuss the valve assembly later on. This is the cylinder head which is the top surface of the combustion chamber. Liners and head are metal to metal joint and these heads are on the block also metal to metal joint by seven stud bolts. So now this is valve assembly. The air inlet and exhaust valves are operated from the camshaft by means of a lifter push rod. This is the push rod. Here you, uh, we can see this is the push rod and valve lever assembly. This is valve lever mounted on the shaft which is fitted on the bracket. The valve lever bracket assembly consisting of bracket and two valve levers mounted on the valve lever shaft they apply to the top of cylinder head. This is uh, cylinder head. If we can see here the valve stem. Two valves are being seen here. The valve stem it seals the top surface by this is spring. This is equalizing yoke. This is valve guide. So movement of this push rod causes the movement of the rotation of this lever from uh, along this uh, axis. This is the shaft axis. So it turns about this axis as the push rod moves up, it goes down and it pushes the valves. So valve is opened and when it comes with the height for the cam profile, when again it rises, it seals the here's 
so the the, the valves are closed so in this fashion the valves work the valve mechanism assembly and fuel injector nozzle on top of the head are enclosed by a aluminum cover this is aluminum cover so the valve lever bracket assembly consisting of a bracket and two valves lever mounted on the valve lever shaft applied to the top of the cylinder head along the equalizing yoke this is the cylinder head here, here uh, these are two valves this is valve guide this is seat insert where it seals the valve on the cylinder head each liner unit has a lifter assembly which consists of two push rods lifter having a common shaft as a fulcrum the shaft is supported by bracket which is attached to the cylinder block so how this movement is taking place this is the lever push rod this is shaft this is valve stem the valve guide here we maintain a clearance of 34 thou between equalizing yoke and valve stem this is very important di dimension that we maintain during tapper timing so this is about valve assembly the engine crank shaft is probably the singular costliest item in the diesel engine it is the medium of transforming reciprocating motion to rotary motion output of the engine is collected from crank shaft the crank shaft is made of one piece of forged steel alloy with its main bearing journals and crank pins machined to a high degree of smoothness the shaft's main bearing and crank pins are joined by a series of crank shaft webs as we can see here this is the main journal this is the crank pin offset to the main journal main journal crank pin so we have total eight crank pin because we have 16 cylinder on each pin we have two cylinders one right and one left so total eight crank pin and to have a eight crank pin we have to support the main crank shaft at nine locations so we have nine main journals central journal will be at number 5 it is in the single piece and it is the most costliest item for the diesel locomotive and so far we have been importing it from the foreign countries we are not making it at our premises in dlw this is the counterweights provided for balancing it is welded to the cam uh, crank shaft this is very high degree machining very smooth very critical item of the diesel locomotive so the counter valance are welded at intermittent locations for balancing purpose two connecting rods right and left bank of the same cylinder number are mounted side by side on each crank shaft pins two cylinders on the same crank pin the shaft is designed so that every two symmetrically opposite pins have the same radial throw position the number of main bearing for the 16 cylinder engines are 9 crank in thrust is restricted either by the use of thrust collar installed inside of the center main bearing saddle or by an upper thrust bearing cell at the crank shaft journal nearest to the power take off end so this is the thrust collar to take this the axial thrust of the crank shaft during rotation this is mostly provided at the near the power take off end near the alternator end 
this is the bottom view of the block so here like uh, crankshaft is in hanging position this is the saddle the crankshaft is slung under the cylinder block and rotates on the main bearing shell it is supported by bearing cap that are mounted to saddles in the block with stud bolts and nuts alco locomotive is having electrical transmission system hence to convert mechanical power of engine into electric power a generator is fitted at the traction output end of the engine so this rotation of the crankshaft by the piston through this connecting rod the reciprocating motion is converted into rotary motion and the rotation of the crankshaft means forms the rotor of the alternator which generates electricity the power for our traction motors the rotor of the traction motor is mounted directly on the crankshaft through flange joint the main bearing for crankshaft consists of two steel bag precision fitted shell with well bonded lining the upper one fits in to a saddle of the cylinder block and on the cylinder block the lower into a forged steel bearing cap so this is a very critical item and uh, during the maintenance of a major schedule this is on the critical path very few staff of the sets are experienced to do this main bearing jobs to maintain the deflection of crank shaft and check all the dimensions so that there is a limit of how the maximum offset can be between two bearings between center bearing and last bearing between two end bearing so these are all maintained within very precise level in the at the level of how so this is very critical job of maintenance of diesel engine so already discussed crankshaft is the singular costless item output of the engine is collected from the crankshaft it gives mechanical drive to cam shaft compressor radiator fan and other allied components like water pump low boil pump traction motor blower etc single piece forged it is now cam shaft cam shaft is the cam shaft of V type cylinder is located on either side of the cylinder block and extends the entire length of the engine DLW have modified camshaft design which is more torsionally stiff as the roller of the fuel pump cross head and valve push rod lifters ride on the cams the rotation of the camshaft actuates the engine air inlet and exhaust valves and fuel pumps lateral movement of the cam shafts is restricted by a thrust bearing located at the end of the engine for generation of high air horsepower with improved fuel efficiency fuel cam lobe design needed change for sharper fuel injection a new design of cam shaft with modified profile of fuel cam lobe was developed this design was called a stiffer unit cam shaft peak fuel line pressure of 1100 1100 bars was achieved with this cam shaft a stiffer unit cam shaft features are one segment for each cylinder as we can see this is a single piece we have three lobes one inlet one exhaust and center is for the fuel injection having air fuel and exhaust cams it meets the requirement of operated engine due to excessive wear rate of very less rate of wear of cam roller and it is very easy to replace more fuel saving due to its cam profile with shorter and higher pressure fuel injection more reliable longer life easy maintenance improved material 25% reduction reduction in bending stress 25% higher torsional stiffness 
only one right hand and one left hand cam segment design so it has many more advantages over the conventional cam shaft now this is turning arrangement the engine turning arrangement consists of a plate or ring attached to the back of generator fan this is the fan a bearing bar and a pointer which indicates piston top dead center this is the indicator of tdc top dead center and this is fuel injection indication when the generator fan ring is properly positioned there are two half holes to the pointer which matches with the hole on the fan ring top one is to use to locate top dead center and the lower one for the injection when we do the tapper timing we need to have the cylinder uh, on the tdc so number of cylinders are also marked which cylinder is on the tdc and we have to set the timing and of the injection so this is the turning arrangement at the alternator end of the engine block now turbo supercharger two new designs of high efficiency turbo superchargers avb vtc 304 and ge 7s1 1716 twin discharge was introduced for 3100 hp engine there was increase in the booster pressure with the use of above turbos from 1.6 bar to 1.9 bar the speed of the rotor at the rated power also increased to 27000 rpm against 23000 rpm of 2600 hp locomotive turbo supercharger so we have the phases in improvement of turbo supercharger which has not only increased our engine output but also reduced the maintenance uh, frequency so this is the turbo charger used in 3100 hp engines so further two new generation turbo supercharger abb tpr 61 and hs 5800 ngt were introduced for 3100 hp and 3300 hp engines the rotor speed of these turbo superchargers went up to 30000 rpm the new generation turbo superchargers cost increase in the booster pressure up by 2.2 bar to 2.5 bar so these are new generation turbo superchargers their maintenance frequency is almost equal to the poh frequency of the engine so there is also a reduction in maintenance and improvement in engine power now large after cooler the engine is equipped with an after cooler to cool inlet air to the engine after it is discharged from the turbo supercharger by water it cools the compressed air to engine thereby increasing the density of charge air a large after cooler with higher effectiveness was designed for better cooling of compressed air the size of the core was increased to get higher contact area between water and air the new after cooler called large after cooler also resulted in lower cycle temperature and lower thermal stresses on the engine also the piping was modified the water to after cooler was provided directly from the outlet of the uh, radiator uh, radiators where the water temperature was minimum before the water pump now this is one test related to the ceiling of our combustion chamber ceiling efficiency so it is called blow by test is conducted on a running engine to check the ceiling efficiency of the combustion chamber and this is the procedure 
run the engine to attain normal operating temperature around 65 degree stop running after attaining normal operating temperature bring the piston of the corresponding cylinder at tdc in compression stroke fit blow by gadget removing decompression plug charge the combustion chamber with compressed air cut off air supply at 70 psi through a stop cork and record the time when it comes down to zero 7 to 10 second is okay if less there is extra leakage to so check for leakage to check leakage charge continuously at 70 psi leakage through tsc indicates head defective leakage through some indicates defect in piston or liner so it is a basically a test to check the sealing efficiency of combustion chamber so friends uh, that's all in this lecture we have covered lot of components of power pack there are many more components like crankcase exhauster and other things are mounted on the engine that will be covered in uh, different lectures of lube oil water system we will discuss lube oil water system um, charged air system fuel air, fuel oil system so everything will be covered one by one in this chapter we have discussed major components of power pack so that's all for this video I hope you might have enjoyed the video and thank you for attending the lecture. That's all from my side.